I'll tell you what, this is a very interesting interview with Jacinda Ardern. It's obvious that she does not know the three articles of the treaty or the affirmation or the preamble. If she knew just a little bit of the treaty, we would expect that she would be able to at least summarize each article. But no, she can't even do that. So what does she do? She bluffs. She bluffs her way, relying on activist Willie Jackson over her shoulder to feed her key words from the treaty, Kawanatanga and Tino Rangatiratanga. She further disgraces herself by not pronouncing Tino Rangatiratanga properly at all. She sort of wings it. The hole she is digging for herself deepens when she says that she has learned about the treaty when she was at school. So how is it that she can't muster even a summary of the three articles? Come on. Well, maybe she's just forgotten them. In which case, her study of the treaty can't have been very important to her. We usually remember that which is important to us, don't we? Or maybe she didn't really study the treaty at all, and she's lying when she said she did. Either way, it's shameful for a Prime Minister to be treaty ignorant. Billions of dollars in cash and assets are being gifted to Maori on the basis of the treaty. All Prime Ministers should know the treaty inside out, in my view. How else can they know right from wrong and truth from error with respect to the treaty? The answer is they can't. They have no option but to drive blind if they don't know the treaty. It's too important to be ignorant about. When one looks back at Ardern's Prime Ministership and studies her, it's obvious that she did not know the treaty. She didn't need to. Why? She was simply using the treaty as a Trojan horse. An excuse to take wealth from hard-working Kiwis and give it to Maori. In other words, she was not a truth-driven person but an ideologically driven person. The truth of the treaty did not interest her. What interested her was outworking her communist Marxist ideas, and the treaty was simply an excuse to do that. The Article 1 of the treaty, what does it say? Oh, Article 1, on the spot? Kawangatanga, sorry, excuse me. Article 2? Oh, look, Tino Ringatanga, I know the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi and our obligations. Of course, uh, we are as a government trying to fulfil those, not just in legislation, but in the policies and programmes that we roll. Do you think that the Treaty of Waitangi should be a compulsory part of the New Zealand school curriculum? Yeah, well, certainly, I learnt about Te Treaty um, uh, as part of my um, education, uh, and many of our children and young people will and should as part of learning about uh, Aotearoa's history. Um, it is part of our history, and we should be learning about well, it. Should it be Māori. compulsory in schools at the moment? It's simply an option. Oh, look, uh, I would certainly have an expectation and a hope that it is learnt across our schools as part of our curriculum. It is there available and it is part of our history. Uh, I think most New Zealanders would agree with that as well. Uh, you know, this is uh, our country. It is part of our history. It is our founding document as a nation. Our students should be learning about it. Will you as the Prime Minister make moves to ensure that perhaps it is a compulsory part of the curriculum yeah, rather than an option? Yeah, look, my first question would be, you know, how many aren't? I would be surprised if it wasn't being taught universally. So look, I am happy to ask the question because uh, I would have thought that most schools, most parents, uh, most members of the public would want children in Aotearoa learning about our own history. And so today I'm announcing that I will not be seeking re-election. And that my term as Prime Minister will conclude no later than the 7th of February. Please share this video with everyone everywhere. The mainstream media should be reporting on the issues I am raising in these videos, but they're not. Why aren't they? Well, they're corrupt. Why are they corrupt? They are collaborating with Maori activists. There's no doubt about that. In the final analysis, the people of New Zealand, that's us, have ultimate power, not the politicians. Did you know that? The people can kick out the people in power and they can put them into power. How are we going to do that? Well, awareness is the key to change. If enough people in New Zealand become aware of the issues I am raising, we can save this beautiful country. So share these videos everywhere so that come the next election, we can vote the right people in and kick out the people who are destroying New Zealand.